More caution and protection has been used for this man than anything had ever been seen in the city of Dallas, probably more than had been used to protect the President of the United States. In fact, uh, Dallas City Hall is normally a public building, but today it was really under armed guard. Jack. An ambulance apparently had been standing by in case of emergency. It was rushed up and Oswald put into it, taken to Parkland, Parkland Hospital. Dean said, uh, one man up there said that uh, the suspect, Ruby, was mumbling as officers seized him. So far. Lee Oswald is currently undergoing surgery for a single gunshot wound that entered on his left side and did not exit. The patient is in extremely critical condition. Dr. Shires will make a personal statement when the surgery is completed. Mr. Landrigan, uh, you indicated that you had made some preparations for this eventuality. Uh, as I said, our, our job is to be prepared. We had received word that there was quite a crowd down there, and uh, on the possibility that there might be some type of disorder, we had alerted our emergency room to be prepared. Some additional information we found out is that early this morning, according to a Dallas police officer, they received the following call. Quote, I don't want any problems. I don't want any policemen to get hurt. But there's one group that's going to get, when we leave a word out, that man referring to Oswald when he is transferred. This call reportedly came in uh, early this morning. Possibility they were, but they uh... were they ready to bring them down here? Yeah, we're outside of the courthouse where a crowd of several hundred had gathered awaiting the arrival of Lee Harvey Oswald. Ten blocks away at City Hall, that arrival stopped by apparently a bullet. This crowd, when word flashed through the crowd that Oswald had been shot, broke out into a cheer. The crowd has been dispersing for the past five minutes, many of them uh, just getting the news. What's your reaction to uh, hearing that suspect Oswald has been shot down? Well, I, I can't hardly say what what right now, but I think that the people wanted a quick decision on on his uh, uh, execution and, and, and get him put away. Also here in the studio, uh, WFAA News Director Bob Walker. Bob, what's new? Just learned from City Hall from a very authoritative source that police are working on the assumption that there indeed is a connection between Jack Ruby and Lee Oswald, and that in some manner of speaking, Oswald's murder was to shut him up. Also, they have said that they will not release in the immediate future at all any of the information the FBI has gathered which led them to believe so strongly that Oswald had uh, assassinated the president. But the police and investigation now is working on the assumption that there is a definite connection between Lee Oswald and Jack Ruby and the attempt and the successful attempt on Oswald's life was an attempt to shut him up. This word from a reliable source at City Hall. Adding, uh, Bob, I might that have taken place in Dallas the past few days would certainly indicate that there were, were no clear-cut uh, defining points involved in the in initial assassination. Uh, now this only compounds it. Uh, it will be remarkable to uh, find when the story is eventually known of what actually did happen. We understand that an assistant attorney general from Washington, Jack Miller, Jr., is en route to uh, Dallas to confer with federal agents here and the Dallas City Police. Did, did Jack really say how he got into the basement here today? He, uh, he didn't uh, tell me that. No. Did, he, did he say he, he said... planned it for a while, Captain? He, uh, the, some of those things I can't answer for you, and... Uh, he, of course, has uh, talked to an attorney and there's certain things that he don't want to tell me. What happened here today was absolutely impossible, according to police and according to newsmen. The area was very secure. There were police in every possible corner. Yet this ring of security was broken by a man who lunged out between photographers and shot the man who was accused of killing the person. He's going to be taken upstairs to the jail They've opened the door and he's going to the jail elevator. This is the first interrogation down here on the third floor by members of the homicide squad. Again, this scene 
very similar to scenes uh, you've seen before, repeated yesterday and the day before. You are one of Ruby's lawyers. Perhaps you will defend him in this case. I understand that uh, you received a call from your wife at home. Yes, sir. A police detective told me how he knew it. I don't know that I had been threatened, and I just talked with my wife. And what did you tell Betty, her? Betty, and Betty told me she had she was crying and said that uh, she had received two calls that I would be next to die. From the same person? Oh, she doesn't know. She, she it said it. Voice? It's in a foreign voice. Yes. And what did you tell her? I told her to get the baby and get out of the house. Nine years old. Uh, was it a man calling? Yes. A man calling both times? He discussed yes. the case to this extent that I advised him of his rights and what he should do and should not do, and he said he would follow my instructions to are the you, best of his ability. Are you worried about, are you worried about his safety? Well, a man would have to be worried about his safety after the things that have happened here in the last two or three days. Lawyer Tom Howard, interviewed by ABC's Bill Lord, we understand that he has been selected as at least one of the defense counselors to serve for Jack Ruby, who has already been formally charged with first-degree murder in the death today of Lee Harvey Oswald. These events, these bizarre, frightening, strange, unbelievable events, have overshadowed somewhat another major story in Dallas. possibility, Mr. Howard, that uh, there was some uh, connection between Oswald and Ruby that they had met or knew each other? There is that wild rumor going around. So far as I know and so far as I am concerned, I don't think there's a bit of truth in that. A performer at Mr. Ruby's club said that he thought he saw Oswald there some days ago. I think he was mistaken. This is a memory expert. Who mm -hmm. claims does to that be kind of a leader. performance? In what Who cases have you represented Mr. Leader. Ruby in the... Is it true? Have you Mr. seen the map the Dallas Morning News has yeah. signed by the police? No, I haven't. One more question, Mr. Howard. Is it true that uh, Mr. Ruby may have left certain personal effects like identification and money in his car? Yesterday, uh, the car was found in a parking lot adjacent to police headquarters. He could have. I don't know. Mr. Howard, you say that you have had some support evidence in your defense of Ruby. Have you had any adverse uh, telephone calls or anything such as that? Had one crank call, you know, the kind you get in cases like this. Uh, to what effect? Oh, something about the hate group's going to get you or something like that. You expect those things in case. Mr. Howard, does he realize that uh, what he's done perhaps bring a question for the rest of history whether who killed President Kennedy? Can you explain why during his presence here prior to the shooting he must have been within close proximity of uh, Oswald, but apparently then never showed any emotional outbursts or never said anything? He was here uh, at times when it is believed that Oswald would have passed him by. Uh, he was around a group of people. Uh, did this build up, this emotional... I'm sure it's built up over a period of several days. I'm going to represent him uh, uh, in the manner that I think is for, the, for his best interest. What is his best interest? <laughs> And now the headliner of our show, direct from New Orleans, ladies and gentlemen, Jada. Jada, how long did you know Jack Ruby? I knew Jack Ruby for approximately four, five, six months. In what relationship? I was employed as the uh, feature at the Carousel Club, and I had known Jack before I went to work there, and uh, I had a slight hassle with Jack, and I had left, and... Uh, that was the end of my association with Jack. What about politics? Does he seem interested in politics? Particularly regarding the Kennedys. I have heard Jack talk about the Kennedys, and I've been trying to think, and it's so confusing today, but I believe he disliked Bobby Kennedy. Can't, no recollection of what he had ever said about the president. Uh, 
Uh, yes, he followed that statement up about Bobby with something about uh, Jack Kennedy, but I can't, for the minute, just form it in my mind. Do you think that uh, Jack Ruby is a type of man that was capable of killing the assassin of President Kennedy out of love for Kennedy, out of political motives? Uh, I don't think he loved Kennedy that much. Uh, I don't know why he would do it. I'd say he would be perfectly capable of an act like that, uh, very much so. But the reasons for it, those are hard to pin down, as the portrait of Jack Ruby emerges piece by piece. This is for good ABC. You understand Dallas. that the city officials of Dallas, the city police officials, police chief Just Curry, and federal agents are meeting at this uh, hour at the chief's office and are awaiting the arrival from Washington of a key Justice Department official, apparently to piece together the strange facts and the multitude of rumors and suspicious yes, stories. It was unusual for Jack Ruby to be in that crowd. I don't pass on that. Uh, unusual for being that crowd. I don't. Well, I was. I haven't been here since last night, so I don't know anything about the liberty. You know the story that Otto and Ruby were previously appointed. I think I heard it on radio or something, but I don't know anything about it. We had a chance to talk with Ruby. I have not talked with. Okay. No, sir, I've not talked with either one of them. Well, will we get a chance to talk to them? I don't know anything about that. You know, I, this was entirely about going over the evidence that I thought some of you would want. Do you know Ruby before this? No, sir. Saw him in this very same room Friday night when we had the defendant up here. You were party for the Texas Bar Association in the Adolphus Hotel. Were you there? No, sir, I wasn't there. As a matter of fact, some of... Oh, excuse me. If some of you will recall, he asked a question from out here in the audience or answered a question. He stand right back here, and I didn't know who he was. I thought he was a member of the press, and he told me as we walked out of here that he was a nightclub operator here. What question did he ask? What? What question did he ask? I don't remember, but he... he uh, maybe it was an answer, but he said something. I... Friday night when I asked you to do an interview with me on the phone, then you had another call, and, and Ruby was hanging around in the background. You were on the phone, and I said, uh, and I and then you had to uh, go away, and I and I asked Ruby uh, because he seemed to me like a detective. He seemed to be all over this place. I said, would you see if you could get him on the phone? Oh, over to here, here now. And he went around, and he got you, and he brought you over to my telephone. It might have been where he told me who he was. I didn't know who he was either when he. Uh, I think someone here answered that question in that he answered a question. Somebody asked something and he answered it back there. And I don't know what it was. I think it was some question about a street or an address or a name or something. It looked to me like you just 